No, no, no. That is not how it happened. That isn't right. Let's go back in time a bit. Allow me to tell you what really happened. Wait a moment. That is not what happened. Fortunately, that is not how it happened. Wait. This is not the end of my tale. It did not end that way. No. That's not the way this story ends. No, that isn't right. Let us return to an earlier time. That is incorrect. Let me tell you how it really happened this time. Allow me to continue. When you have the time, I will continue. Tell me when you want to hear more. Tell me when you have time to hear more. Please let me know when you're ready to hear more. If you require a break, by all means, take your time. I am happy to wait. I have all the time in the world. Would you like to hear more? Let me know when you have the time to hear more. I will continue my story from here next time. Good. This is a fine place to start the tale next time. All right then. Very well. Then I will await your return. Until next time. I'll be here. Waiting. Very well. So be it. As you wish. All right then. Very good. I will continue. Let's see. Where was I? Now, where did I leave off? But this tale is far from over. Do you wish for me to stop my story at this time? Do you not want to hear the rest of this tale? Shall I leave the rest for later? Do you desire to continue this another time? Should I leave the rest for another time? Is this where I should resume the tale next time? Shall I continue my story from here if you are called away? Should I continue from here when you return? The prince made his way along the torn and blasted district haunted by visions from his past. The dockside tavern where he'd spent many late nights was now reduced to cinders. Babylon's proud armada, which he would often come to greet, lay cracked and broken, cast to the bottom of the Euphrates. You should know that it was not love that drove him, but duty. I was his responsibility. He had made a promise, a promise that was now broken and undone. As with all mistakes he had made, the prince meant to fix this. A noble goal to be certain, but a selfish one as well. For he was motivated to ease his own pain. Pay attention to what the prince overheard as he drew close to where I was being kept. When the prince was struck by the sands of time, something was woken within. Something strange and cunning, something dark. The seven years spent on the run had embittered the prince and made him hard. This burden sustained his other half, gave it strength. The prince was tempted to do as it said, for it was a light in the darkness, offering comfort and guidance to a man who had just lost everything. But what were its intentions? Why did it help him? Only time would tell. And so once more the prince began the journey home his mind afire with visions of the justice he would visit upon the vizier. While somewhat demanding, his invisible companion proved a valuable ally, helping to avoid the many enemies and obstacles encountered along the way. The prince fled from the arena, embarrassed by the unwanted attention, fearful that they might realize he was becoming a sand monster. But something tugged at him. The freed citizens believed he had come to rescue them. That people, his people, now lived when they should have died. This was just an accident. His thoughts had been only of reaching the vizier and exacting revenge. Perhaps now the prince would remember he once fought for something other than his lost honor. It was simply too soon to tell. With the Dahaka defeated, the prince was slowly regaining pieces of his former self. The pressure and desperation which once drove him were gone. Grim as things seemed, there was now hope. Hope that peace could be restored to the land and to our tortured hero. But the vizier's army still hunted him. And they grew more determined by the hour. And so the prince and Pharaoh separated. She sought to save lives. He to end them, for the prince intended to confront his enemy and perhaps utilize the powerful warriors who had holed up inside the temple. His mind churned with thoughts of glorious vengeance, but something new as well. Descending into the depths, 
his thoughts kept returning to Pharaoh. He wondered if she was thinking of him as well. Babylon had finally fallen and none were left to come to the prince's aid. He was now the city's only hope. If he failed, his entire world could be lost. For the vizier was not content to simply be a king. No. He fancied himself a god. The question now was whether the prince realized the position he was in. And if he did, would he accept this responsibility? Would he become a hero? So she had reached the prince. He feared for her safety. Even if it was just one person, at least now he thought of someone other than himself. Poor prince. His secret self had been revealed, and Farah quite disturbed by what she had seen. Perhaps he should have been honest from the beginning. Too late he realized his mistake in staying silent. The prince cleansed himself in the waters of the fountain. Though returned to a normal body, the same could not be said for his mind. The prince was finally forced to accept the fact that Pharaoh was lost to him, and that he alone was responsible for this. Had he not hidden the truth from her, had he shown more compassion, then perhaps things may have gone another way. But now it was simply too late. In spite of this, or perhaps because of it, the prince found himself profoundly affected by Pharaoh's earlier words and deeds. They had wrought a change in him, slowly supplanting the dark demands of his ruthless alter ego. The prince's spirits were lifted by the release of the trapped citizens. He rode now for the palace, not to reclaim his birthright, but to save his kingdom and its people. And so the prince's eyes had finally been opened to the true nature of his corrupt half, that cruel and charismatic voice which once whispered in his ear. It had subtly encouraged our burdened hero to do wrong. But now the voice was stilled, the prince's mind once more his own. You may wonder why I would let this come to pass. So many dead, and likely more to follow. An empire reduced to rubble. A prince cast to the streets and hunted like a common criminal. But I had seen the timeline. And of all the outcomes laid bare to me, this one held the most promise of them all. For the prince would have an opportunity to set things right. Watch now. See the thing of which I speak.